and no wonder Lionel Sanders is like all over the dude's run and stride. Don't judge me. There's just so much room for activities. Well, unfortunately, Traniacs, yeah. My attempts to just forget to leave Kona went thwarted. We're in an airport, that means we gotta go. I went for a run yesterday and uh, I did not run as fast as Patrick Lang did. And I started thinking, hey, let's take a look at what Patrick Lang's running stride is like. And I looked at him like, oh damn, that's really nice. No wonder he owns the course record. And no wonder Lionel Sanders is like, all over the dude's running stride. So what we're gonna do here while I'm waiting for the plane to board is we're gonna look at Patrick Lang's running stride and see what we can learn from it. Oh, that is nice, eh? Let's see if we can get a side on. Lionel Sanders got the side on view right here. Boom. That is nice. Okay, there's a few things that like are very, very basic, but when you put it all together, it amounts to a really efficient, fast running stride. So number one, let's take a look at this from the side, right there. Number one is he's really upright. He's not collapsed, he's not hunched over, he's looking forward, he's looking at the horizon, he's not looking down at the ground, he doesn't have an arched back pushing up, looking up and kind of having to tilt his neck down. So he's basically a little bit upright, if anything, pushed a little bit forward. And a way that you can envision that is like, picture running towards a building and that building is tipping over like that and your chest is following it. So that'll get you moving forward. So again, he's nice and upright, he's not crunched down, he's fully extended, and what that allows him to do is get a nice high knee right there, and he can also put the leg all the way in behind him. So each stride is spending as little time as possible on the ground. You're flying through the air where there's no drag for as long as you can. There's one angle that I want to show you here. Now there we go. When you see him in front, he's using his arms. He's pumping his arms to keep that cadence up. That's a trick that when you get towards the last half of a run, when you start feeling, you know, really gummed up and like your body feels like cement and you can't turn it over, you use your arms and concentrate on the push forward and that'll get your legs going. But you don't want to push across your body because that's making momentum go that way. So you look at Lang here, he's using his arms, but he's only coming basically to the exact center line of his body and he's making sure that he's not going over. He's got nice level shoulders, he doesn't have one shoulder dipped lower than the other like you'll see from Lionel Sanders, who by the way could still kill me in a run. That is nice, that is it's just pretty. And you'll see here, it might be a little bit hard to see from the front, but he's landing with his feet basically directly under the center line of his body. There was a lot of talk about, well, you have to be a four foot striker or a mid foot striker, you can't land on your heel. That's since been proven wrong. Whether you're landing on your heel, your four foot, your mid foot, That kid's not a fan. It doesn't matter as long as you're landing under the center of gravity in your body. If you're landing out front, you're braking, but ideally if you're under the center line or just a little bit behind, you're going to have that lean forward. Whoa, that's not a lean forward. You're gonna have that. You're gonna have that lean forward that Patrick Lang is able to do working on your side. Basically, your body's gonna be pulling you forward without your legs having to push you. Free speed. All right, 
let's call that uh, a check-in for now, shall we? Patrick Lang, my god, so fast. I like the dude. I like that guy. I was fully intending to sleep on a really big chunk of that flight from Honolulu to Chicago. It didn't happen. It's midnight back in Kona time. It's 5.45 here. No sleep. So sometimes a dude just needs to find a quiet alcove and lie on the floor. Don't judge me. Absolutely wild approach, but smooth landing. I was impressed. Oh, hey! You know it isn't a light packing job? Coming home from Kona. Oh, we have so much camera gear and running shoes and biking gear. Well over the limit. So that's it for Iron Man Kona 2017. Thank you all so much. Old Trainiacs, new Trainiacs, as I know there's a whole bunch of them. The amount of views and comments and likes and shares that I was able to see that you all did, especially with the Kona recap video, which is blowing up like two days, 25,000 views, more comments than any video we've ever done. Thank you. Thank you so much. The only reason that we are able to do this is because of all the engagement and all the views and all the watching and all of you that are constantly trainiacking out there. So it means a lot to me that you came along for that journey. And yes, there are gonna be tons more because like just next week, I gotta go race Half Iron Man Austin. And we'll do more trips, but for now, I'm back in the frozen tundra of Winnipeg and there is a wind warning. However, take a look at this. Triathlon Terran's new headquarters? Huh? Huh? This thing's friggin' huge! This is overpowering the house. Look at this, look at this. We got big 10-foot ceilings. We got windows. We got a 16-foot garage door. There's just so much room for activities. Oh my God. Oh, give it a few weeks. It's going to be good. It's going to be really good. All right, Trainiacs. Thank you all very much. I am Kona. Out. <laughs>